England in 1912 was the most powerful nation on earth, probably the most powerful nation there'll ever be. Um, and we'd been in that position for pretty much 50 years. And we couldn't see any reason why that wasn't going to continue forever. But we were steaming as obliviously towards the First World War two years later as the Titanic was towards its iceberg. And so it felt like the Titanic was the perfect metaphor for English society. I think 1912 is a sort of pivotal time in history, the fantastic phase of the Edwardian era have just come to an end, which had sort of opened things up, there'd been sort of wonderful balls and it had been fantastic after the long austerity of the latter years of Queen Victoria. But as we know, uh, at the time Titanic goes down, April 1912, it's just before the beginning of the First World War and after that everything is going to change. The society then was extraordinary because it was built on very firm sort of lines and you had a class structure that was absolutely predetermined. You had the upper class, you had the middle class who'd only really just begun to exist, the industrialists and the people who were beginning to make serious money from finance and then you had the, the lower class, the working class um, and they were set in their ways in a way that is no longer the case. For us, the, the real thing was to actually go for the, the people involved, I suppose. Generally, people talk about the third class and the first class, or, or you know, the peasants and the toffs, whereas we have these people who are sort of more middling than that as well. And to tell those stories, actually, and about the, what it's like to be in those kind of positions in life, you know, how the middle class dealt with the upper class. There's a shortcut. You'll get to your corridor, but if you keep going, you'll come to the staircase of the first class. But uh, don't let anyone see you. And how they, the uneasiness with which those two classes kind of rubbed up in 1912. And the Titanic just becomes, in a sense, a backdrop for those explorations. Here we are, my lord. All presently correct. So you are. The boat is the perfect metaphor for society in that it is literally the society rendered in steel. You've got the toffs on the top, the middle class in the middle, and the lower class down in steerage on the bottom. But you've also got the crew as well. So you've got the officers, and then you've got and so it's the other ranks. And then right down at the bottom, you've got the poor sort of boiler men, the, the stokers who are you know, right down at the bottom. All the characters have a point of view which is in some ways correct. You know, I don't think there are any characters in this where you think they're awful or you know, they're, they're a goodie or a baddie or whatever. People do sometimes questionable things, but they're all trying. And the thing about those people is that it's the individual stories that you can most you know, draw the emotion out of and understand what it was like to be at that time when the world, in a sense, turned and the masters of the universe fell. Really, officer, I wish you would explain the company policy. We have Madame Obard, who I gather is almost a woman of the streets. Well, everyone has a right to cross the Atlantic. But not in first class. 